is Rajat Bhatia and I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Neural Capital. Uh, Neural Capital is a small boutique firm which was based in Delray Beach in Florida. And as the name suggests, we specialize in developing mathematical trading strategies for the global financial markets using artificial intelligence techniques like neural networks, genetic algorithms and others. This is something that I've been doing for the last 10 years as an entrepreneur. Before my entrepreneurial career, I worked with some of the big investment banks. In particular, I worked with Citibank in Bombay and also with Citibank Global Asset Management in London in the Alternative Investment Strategies Group, where we, my team managed $10 billion in fund of hedge funds and in collateralized bond obligations and collateralized loan obligations. I've also worked with Lehman Brothers in London in the Global Derivative Products Group and also with Merrill Lynch Capital Markets in Hong Kong. I was educated at the Indian Institute of Management in Ahmedabad and also at Columbia University in New York City. In September 2007, I had written a paper for the hedge fund journal published out of London. This paper was titled, Financial Chernobyl or Manageable Risk, The Brewing Storm in Subprime and CDO Markets. The crux of this paper basically was that with the falling levels in the ABX indices and with some of the hedge funds who had invested in credit products going underwater, it was quite evident that a serious financial crisis was on our our radar screens. At the same time, Hank Paulson and Ben Bernanke were on record as saying that everything was fine with the financial system. But as events later proved in November 2007, the markets made their all-time high and a serious financial crisis engulfed the whole planet, starting with the collateralized debt obligations that had been packaged and sold to investors all around the world. These toxic securities that were sold as far away as Australia basically were highly leveraged themselves and in return some of these hedge funds had borrowed more money against these toxic securities in order to enhance returns. With low interest rates in the United States and Japan and in many other uh, advanced countries, there was a need to generate financial products through financial engineering that could create enhanced returns for pension funds, for hedge funds, and for university endowments. In this massive search for high yields and high returns, people forgot about the risk that they were actually taking on. And that is what actually led to this grave financial crisis, which was eventually solved by the Federal Reserve Bank and the US Treasury bailing out a large number of major US banks. And many people have asked me, are we to blame derivatives and financial innovation for our financial crisis or is there something else to be blamed? The simple answer is that derivatives can be a great servant and they can be extremely useful but they can also be a very dangerous master. Derivatives are like electricity, a good servant and a bad master. It is the wrongful use of derivatives that is to blame for the financial crisis of 2008, not the derivatives themselves. Just as you could use a nuclear bomb to destroy millions of people and big cities, or you could use nuclear energy to produce electricity that can light up cities for miles and miles together. Same way, derivatives can be put to very good uses not only through financial engineering, but also through risk management, through hedging strategies, and currency and interest rate swaps are a prime example of how big companies and corporations can use derivatives to offset the risk that are there in their businesses and their balance sheets. However, the misuse of derivatives by people who do not understand them properly, especially the sales force who sell derivatives without understanding the risk, and also the buyers of these derivatives who buy these products without understanding the risk embedded in them are chiefly to, to blame for the financial crisis of 2008. There was an article in the Risk magazine in 1997 which had highlighted the enormous risk and enormous leverage in the equity tranches of collateralized debt obligations. Some of these transactions have the leverage of 10,000 to 1 which is huge by any standard. 
and any defaults that take place immediately start impacting the equity investor in a collateralized debt obligation. People in 2007 thought that by actually creating more complex products like CDO squared, which are also known as CDOs of CDOs, the risk embedded in CDOs have been mitigated to the point where they would never have to see a bad day. Unfortunately, the events of 2008 have shown that over-engineering of financial products, the wrongful and misuse of derivative products can come to haunt any financial institution in a very big way.